Remember the scene from Aliens, where John Hurt is suffering immense pain whilst an alien tries to escape from ripping out from inside of his stomach? Or those scenes where someone is falling to the bottom of the ocean, panicking with fear and despair that will never see the surface again, with no hopes of things getting better? Or a plane tumbling from the sky, spiralling downwards towards impending doom? This is the closest I can get to describing what a severe acute pancreatitis attack is like. The pain, the fear, the lack of control, the loss of hope, the despair, the terror. My name is Dave Hughes from Portsmouth in the UK and this is some of my pancreatitis story. Back in Easter 2017, feeling fit, healthy and invincible, a family vacation to remember to New York. Partway through the holiday, having had some incredible days, taking the wife and kids to the Empire State Building and the Statue of Liberty, things took a massive downwards turn. I woke up in the middle of the night with stomach cramps. Those cramps over the next 12 hours got worse and worse, along with shivers, fevers and shakes, where I had to sit scrunched up in the shower to try and cool down my burning up body. Things continued to get worse with the pain levels increasing upwards at a rate of knots, and I was rushed into the nearest hospital. The fear of not knowing was almost as bad as the pain itself. During that night, after a series of tests, I was eventually diagnosed with severe acute pancreatitis due to gallstones getting lodged in my pancreas, and my levels were rocketing past 26,000 and climbing just as quickly as my body was going downhill. I couldn't really understand what was going on as my body was racked with wave and wave after pain, enabling me to concentrate on nothing else despite the huge doses of morphine and other pain relief being given to me. My poor wife was trying to be by my side, but also look after the, our two children in the hospital in New York in the middle of the night. Overnight, this organ I'd never heard of was not only causing me intense pain, but was also causing damage to my other organs and causing them to start to fail. Over the next few days, the excellent medical care started to stabilise me. However, the wards I was on meant the kids could not come and visit me, and I only got to see them briefly before the family had to return to the UK without me. The next few days were the toughest I had been through to that point. I was in a foreign country, thousands of miles away from friends and family, still in huge amounts of pain, very slow minor improvements and no sign of an end of a road to returning back home. I'm not proud to admit I started to lose the mental battle and just wanted my life to end as I could not cope with the pain. The thought of not seeing my loved ones again was a strong enough pull to get me through those dark hours and turn them to, to see UK shores again. Fast forward a couple of weeks and I've become well enough to return home and was back in the UK under some excellent specialist care. I was told I was a ticking time bomb and another attack could kick off at any time, one that could prove truly fatal and at like the slightest sign get myself to hospital. A couple of operations have been scheduled to remove my gallbladder and address some other issues and I stupidly felt it was all going to be okay. Unfortunately, my luck ran out just a few days ahead of my operations and I suffered a huge acute pancreatitis attack. This time flash to bang, it was less than three hours from feeling a slight, slight twinge to the level of pancreatitis and attack on all my organs, significantly worse than what I'd experienced in the US. My consultant happened to be in the hospital as I was rushed there and without his intervention, I would not be here today. I can't really talk about those next few hours due to my not being able to register anything apart from the immense pain I was under, but also as I haven't completely come to terms with how close things came to the end for me. Where still that will always hell, it weigh so heavily is the guilt that I'll carry with me forever for what I put those closest to me through. What happened to me could not be helped, could not be foreseen, and there is nothing I could have done to prevent it. However, etched into my mind is the upset faces of those I care the most about, and I cannot forgive myself for what my body was causing in the pain I saw and reflected in their tears. Thankfully though, the medical teams ensured my operations were successful and things turned from maybe never leaving the hospital alive or not ever leaving a, a bed to being able to return to a near normal life, albeit starting from a position where I was so weak I could not move from the bed without a lot of help. My road to recovery was a mixture of pure stubbornness. If someone tells me no, I can't do something, I'm driven to prove them wrong and a huge amount of love and support from family and friends, no matter how many times my mind or body stumbled. I owe so much to the medical teams, but just as much to those who supported me through. Very few people had heard of the term pancreas 
or pancreatitis or any clue what I'd been really through and that they all rallied around. I still really can't explain to them properly, but to, for them, for people to understand that you really need to have been through it themselves. At times this can be a lonely place to be and you feel self-conscious, isolated, a freak, embarrassed and really like a failure. However, whenever I felt low, friends and family, without being asked, rallied around and picked me back up. So what state have I been left in? In some respects, I'm in better health now than I was before, even though I wasn't really leading an unhealthy lifestyle. However, I'm now a keen runner. And far fitter than I've ever been. That being said, I wake up each morning suffering from nausea. I have random outbreaks of hot or cold sweats. Really feel the cold, my sleep patterns are non-existent. Certain foods can cause me to feel ill for days, but sometimes I'll be fine with. I get stomach pains and cramps far more often than I'll admit to anyone. And unless I do a level of exercise, toxins and other things build up in my body and I feel ill for, for days. I also suffer a lot of mental health issues and mood swings on top of that. Perhaps the most bizarre thing is that randomly my stomach will balloon up for no reason and I can't fill out some shirts or suits properly and then suddenly it'll all calm down again. Whilst no longer feeling I'm invincible, I try to prove to my family I'm more than okay. As friends and family will tell you, I probably push myself too hard and need to try and slow down. Amongst all of this though, I felt confused, angry, frustrated. Why me? What had really happened? What did all this mean? I started to investigate on the web and I learned that I had suffered attacks of the most extreme type and where others had not survived. I had, and I feel really quite guilty about this. I also felt without support or a place to pigeonhole myself. Nobody has heard of a pancreatitis survivor and there was no charity in the UK I could really reach out to for information or support. Thankfully though, I stumbled across the US National Pancreas Foundation. The information I found through them answered a lot of my questions, but the game changer for me was them asking for runners to come run the Marine Corps Marathon in 2018 and just recently in 2019. I now had a purpose, a way to combine my love of running, my need to keep my body under control, and a way to raise money and awareness for others. More importantly, I found a support network with people who understood, and through the journey, have made some amazing friends. Over the last two years, I've run the Marine Corps Marathon twice, something I never could have dreamed of. Raised about $4,000 for the, the MPF, and hold those friends I've made through the MPF in my heart like family. Pancreatitis is one of those most painful conditions there are. Various medical studies have concluded it is more painful at the severe levels than childbirth, and yet most people have never heard of it, including a lot of those in the medical profession. It can also be lethal. Not only do those who suffer from it have to cope with the immense pain, but also feel isolated with little support from those because most people don't understand. My advice to anyone though who is suffering or supporting someone who has or is suffer suffering is to reach out to the National Pancreas Foundation as they really can help. Thank you to, for listening to my story. Let's do all we can to help raise awareness and support for those affected by all pancreas, pancreas diseases.